All right, now we're going to add some measures to this project and look at what the energy impact of those measures are. Uh, easiest way to do this is with a measure set. We'll go with the standard one, add that here. You'll see that nine measures are uh, populated by that. Uh, each one is going to automatically be set to the best value. Reminder that this is uh, best practices based on Slipstream's research for achievable energy savings. Uh, we'll take a look at these one by one and collapse them as we go. Uh, upgrading roof and wall insulation are standard measures. Then for uh, glazing or the windows and doors, um, there's improvements both to the U value or the insulation factor and the solar heat gain coefficient. Then there's improvements to the interior and exterior lighting, cooling equipment, and heating equipment. This last one is an upgrade to the domestic hot water heater. Uh, for this project, we specified an electric resistance heater, uh, which by default is 100% efficient. Uh, and obviously, there's no improvement we can make on that. Future versions of Sketchbox will include the option to specify a heat pump water heater, which is also all electric, but would allow you to uh, specify uh, efficiency improvements. So we'll just remove that one. We're going to add two other measures to see what the impact would be. First one is daylighting controls. So we'll add daylighting as the name, scroll to the lighting selection or the lighting section and pick daylighting and add that. Uh, so daylighting is uh, controls on lighting that reduce uh, lighting power based on how much sunlight is available in the space. So there would be sensors around the perimeter of the building that detect uh, sunlight coming in through the windows and reduce the lighting power. And you can see that uh, daylighting is already turned on for this project. What we're going to do is change the control method from stepped to continuous. So stepped control, there would be a limited number of discrete power levels that could be selected uh, or set on the lighting. Uh, with continuous dimming, there's a broader range of power levels uh, that the lights can be dimmed to, which will result in greater savings. And then the other measure we will add is actually going to be two different ways to improve the energy of the ventilation system. Go down to ventilation, and we're going to do demand controlled ventilation and energy recovery ventilation. Demand control ventilation is a system typically using carbon dioxide sensors, which actually detects in real time how much ventilation air is needed. So when there's a lot of people in the space, uh, they would be exhaling a lot of carbon dioxide and there would be a higher need for ventilation air. And with a demand controlled ventilation system, it's going to adjust the supply of ventilation air uh, based on the readings from those sensors. So by activating demand control ventilation, we allow the space to provide a little bit less ventilation air at times when it's not needed, which will result in energy savings. The other measure is energy recovery ventilation. So this refers to a heat exchanger between the incoming air and the outgoing air. Uh, which allows uh, in heating season the uh, incoming air would be preheated a little bit by the exhaust stream and then in cooling season the incoming air would be pre-cooled by that exhaust stream. So that means that less energy is needed to heat or, and or cool uh, that incoming ventilation air. So we'll turn that on uh, and we're not going to make any changes to the type or effectiveness. We'll leave those as the default. Once that is done, we can switch over to the results tab. This will take just a minute and we should get our results. All right, so we've got a few different charts, tables, and graphs here. We'll go through these one at a time. First is this annual summary table. Um, I want to point out that the baseline column and in the rest of the charts refers to the baseline building that we designed. Proposed refers to all of the measures. So the, any value uh, around proposed includes all of the different measures that we specified. We can see that there's a 25 or 24 percent reduction in energy cost and electric consumption. Uh, there are some small values for natural gas here. Um, this is a, there's a minor issue in the code with how an all-electric building is modeled that still shows these tiny amounts of natural gas, and that's something that's going to be fixed uh, in a future version of Sketchbox. So we'll just ignore that for now. Next up, we have uh, bar charts per measure, so we can see the impact uh, on total energy usage as we look at each individual measure across the bottom there. Uh, and then within each bar, it's broken down by the particular building system. Uh, and we can 
turn off uh, each one of these systems if we want to get a closer look at any particular one. So if we turn off everything except interior lighting, we can see how interior lighting changes with each measure. Uh, and here is where we can see the change in daylighting. Uh, so there's a, a notable savings uh, just by adding that daylighting measure. And actually we can, we can look at that a little bit later on, but the daylighting measure is almost as significant in terms of energy savings as just that interior lighting power reduction that we modeled. Then there's monthly charts after that. So with these we can see how the monthly values change uh, between our baseline building and the proposed building. So for instance we can look at cooling in July. Um, and I'll uh, also point out at this point we can change what the chart is showing. By default it would show energy cost, but let's look at electricity for this one. Uh, so in July there are about 15,000 kilowatt hours needed for cooling in the baseline building, and then over in the proposed in July it's about 8,000 kilowatt hours, so almost a 50% reduction in cooling energy between the baseline and proposed buildings here. And again, just like with the per measure charts, uh, you can turn off individual components if you want to narrow in on just one or two specific uh, parts of the energy consumption. And the last chart is uh, showing the overall savings per measure. Uh, we can look at just electricity here. And the interesting thing that we'll notice is that there's actually negative savings for the roof insulation. So that measure of improving the roof insulation actually resulted in a slight increase in energy usage. Now it's not very much. If we go over to the energy cost, we can see that annually it's a difference of about $80. Uh, so nothing to be too concerned about. Um, but in order to understand what's going on there, and this is something that we, uh, we've seen before, it's expected, but what's actually happening, if we take a look at just the cooling energy, you can see that from the baseline to uh, the upgrade and roof insulation, it's that cooling value that's increased. What's happening there, if you remember from the design tab, this building is a single story, and, and relative to the uh, amount of walls that there are in the exterior building, there's a significant amount of ceiling space or roof space. Uh, commercial buildings like this will actually tend to require some amount of cooling year-round in the central part of the building. That's because the central part of the building is going to have lights and people and equipment that are constantly producing heat. And the only way that that heat can escape the space is through the roof. Uh, it's insulated uh, already by the rest of the building on the periphery or around the perimeter. So by increasing the roof insulation, we're actually trapping a little bit more of the heat. And in the case of this particular building, that actually means that slightly more energy is needed over the course of, year, of the year to provide that cooling. However, because it's such a small impact, it's probably nothing to be too concerned about. Then the last thing we have here is a table of results. Uh, this is just a text-based table with some summary values. Uh, and if you see there's a little clipboard icon here, you can click on that and that will copy that to your computer's clipboard so that you can paste it into a spreadsheet uh, if you need to do any further analysis there. And the last thing that we want to do here is always remember to save our results in case we need to look at this analysis again.